Welcome to the first part of the module on Android services and local inter-process communication mechanisms, which provides an overview of started and bound services. In this part, we discuss what a service is, summarize the two types of services supported by Android, and outline steps for implementing both types of services and configuring services into applications. A service is an Android component that can perform long duration operations in a background thread or process, potentially communicating with other components during its life cycle as described here. For example, a service might perform secure transactions with an e-commerce website, play music or videos on a mobile device, synchronize the contents of an SQLite database with the cloud, or download a file from a remote server, which is an application use case we'll explore further throughout this module. Other Android components can start a service automatically on demand. Services are most commonly started by activity components. A service can continue to run on behalf of the activity that started it, even if the user switches to another activity. Since a service runs in the background, it shouldn't directly access the user interface. In particular, code running in a service should not make calls on user interface toolkit components, such as structured layout objects, controls, dialogues, and menus. This restriction is similar to the constraints on background threads discussed in the module on Android concurrency frameworks although a service may or may not actually run in a background thread. Android supports two different types of services. A started service is launched when a client calls start service, as discussed here. It usually performs a single operation on behalf of the client that started it, and often does not return a result to the client. A started service needs to shut itself down explicitly after completing the operation the client directed it to perform, since its life cycle is independent of the client that started it so it can run in the background indefinitely. A bound service is launched when a client, again, typically an activity component, calls bind service, as discussed here. A bound service offers a client service interface that allows extended two-way conversations between one or more clients and the service. A bound service runs only as long as at least one client remains bound to it. It's automatically destroyed when all clients unbind. Both started and bound services can run in the same or different processes as their clients, based on a configuration setting in the Android manifest XML file. If they run in different processes, then some form of inter-process communication mechanism is needed to exchange messages. To implement started and bound services flexibly and extensively, as well as to guide their inter-process communication efficiently, Android applies many POSA and Gang of Four patterns, including activator, command processor, active object, proxy, broker, and publisher subscriber, as we'll discuss later in this MOOC. Now that we've presented an overview of started and bound services, we'll summarize the steps needed to implement them using Android's services framework, which is part of the Android's activity manager service middleware, shown at this path name. The steps used to implement a service are similar to the steps used to implement an activity, as shown in the week two lecture in Professor Porter's MOOC, since both support canonical framework techniques, such as inversion of control, domain-specific structure and functionality, and semi-complete portions of applications, as discussed in this video. The first step in programming a service involves extending the Android service class, which defines a number of service-specific lifecycle hook methods that play the role of primitive operations in the template method pattern. These hook methods are dispatched automatically by Android service framework via inversion of control in response to infrastructure and application events associated with changes to a service's lifecycle state. Depending on whether the service is intended to be started or bound, different subsets of these hook methods must be overridden, which illustrates how Android service framework defines reusable structure and functionality that's specific to different types of services. Certain hook methods are common to both types of services. For example, the onCreate hook method is dispatched by Android service framework when a service is first launched. It's typically used to initialize the service. Other hook methods are specific to one type of service or another. For example, the onStart command hook method is dispatched by Android service framework every time the start service method is invoked to send an intent command to a started service. It receives the intent parameter pass to start service, which can be used in conjunction with the concurrency model the service applies 
to perform its processing. The onbind and on unbind hook methods are called automatically by the Android service framework when a client binds or unbinds to a bound service via bind service or unbind service respectively. Onbind receives the intent passed to bind service. It's a factory method that returns the inner process communication channel used by a client to communicate with the service. This IPC channel is typically an object described using the Android interface definition language. On unbind is a disposal method called when all clients have disconnected from an interface published by the service. Finally, the Android service framework dispatches the on destroy hook method to notify a service that it's being removed and should therefore clean up any resources it holds. The Android service framework provides a semi-complete portion of an application. So after the service is extended and its hook methods implemented, a description of it must be included in the Android manifest file, together with other components to help complete the application, as discussed here. This XML file contains information that Android needs to plug in various activity and service components and execute the application. Integrating a service into an application is straightforward and involves including the service in the Android manifest file and defining various XML elements that control properties of a service is covered here. For example, a service element is first added as a child of the application element in the Android manifest file and a name is then provided to reference the service class. Services don't automatically run in separate processes or threads. However, making a service run in a separate process just involves adding the process element to the Android manifest file, as discussed here. We'll show how to multi-thread a service later in this module. In summary, Android applications use services to implement long-duration operations in the background. This module focuses primarily on services written by application developers. For example, we examined several variants of started and bound services that can download images from a remote server. However, Android also provides many predefined system services, such as the Activity Manager service, Location Manager service, and Telephony service. Every Android application can use these services as long as it has the proper permissions. By default, a service runs in the same process as the application that it's a part of, though it can easily be configured to run in a separate process by adding an element to the Android manifest file. Regardless of whether a service is configured to run in the same process or in a different process, however, it continues to execute until it stops itself, is stopped by a user, or is terminated by the Android runtime system when it runs low on memory, as discussed here. Many properties of services can be configured in an Android manifest XML file, as shown here. Since started and bound services are implemented as part of Android's service framework, they support inversion of control. For example, Android's middleware dispatches hook methods to manage the service lifecycle in response to infrastructure and application events. The design of Android's service framework is based on software product line techniques guided by commonality and variability analysis, as discussed here. For example, Android's service framework enhances commonality by defining a uniform interface for performing long duration operations that don't interact directly with the user interface. Likewise, this framework handles variability by providing a uniform means for subclasses to override lifecycle hook methods that perform the desired initialization for started and bound services. Android's packaged application contains many services, such as the SMS MMS service that manages messaging operations, the alert service that handles calendar event reminders, the Bluetooth headset service that provides headset and hands-free capabilities for the phone application, the media playback service that streams audio files in the background, and the exchange service that sends email messages to exchange servers. Additional information on Android services appears at this link.